And we'll start with a presentation from Paolo Rosposa from Eurosys. And he will tell us something about QuarksLink, QSFP28. Is it the next step in bandwidth for machine vision? We will know the answer after your presentation, I hope, Paolo. <laughs> Thank you. So I will share my screen. Um, so I'm Paul Posa from Eurysis. Um, today I will talk about the next step in bandwidth for machine vision. So first I will give you a brief introduction of Eurysis. Um, uh, Eurysis is a leading designer and provider of computer vision. With almost uh, 40 years of uh, experience in this market, our products include uh, frame grabbers compatible with uh, Quaxpress, Camera Link, and analog cameras. We also provide certified IP cores for GigiVision, Quaxpress, and USB 3 Vision. And uh, we provide also a set of image processing software tools and libraries that are mostly used in inspection applications. So now I would like to introduce you the next step in bandwidth for machine vision, uh, the QuaxLink QSFP28. So this is the um, preliminary specs of this new board. So the QuaxLink QSFP28 is equipped with a QSFP28 port, compliant with uh, uh, 100G optical modules. Um, it can provide up to 12.5 gigabytes per second of camera bandwidth. Uh, it has a PCI Express Gen 4 by 8, uh, 8 gigabytes of onboard memory for frame buffering. Has a set of 20 digital IO lines to interface with the, the uh, inspection uh, machine. Uh, has a extensive camera and illumination control functions, and also has a user-friendly driver, uh, multi-OS and multi-language. So the uh, QuaxLink USFP28 provides us with uh, 2.5 times more bandwidth than the previous, previous version, the QSFP+. Plus. Uh, to illustrate this big step in bandwidth, uh, here we can see a frame rate comparison between QSFP plus and QSFP 28. So for uh, the same camera resolution, like uh, for example, 12 megapixels camera, uh, with a QSFP plus, we could reach 381 frames per second. And now with a QSFP 28, we can go up to 950 three uh, frames per second. So again, in terms of bandwidth, we can say that uh, QuaxLink QSFP28 board provides the same bandwidth as 10 6P12 connections in a single PCI Express slot, or even 20 6P6 connections or even 14 camera link full frame grabbers in a single uh, single PCI Express slot. In terms of camera support, um, so the uh, QuaxLink QSFP28 supports uh, 100G camera, uh, and for multi-camera applications, we can use a breakout uh, fiber cable and that allow us to connect up to two 50G cameras, uh, three cameras where two are 25G and one 50G, or up to four 25G cameras in a single frame grammar. Now, a uh, little bit about the technology behind uh, the QuaxLink QSFP28. So the QSFP28, the QuaxLink QSFP28 uh, supports QuaxPress or uh, Verfiber that we consider that is the best 
uh, standard for machine vision industry for the moment. Um, it was first demonstrated in, in 2008 and uh, extended in 2021 to support fiber optics. And today, more than 60 companies worldwide provide cameras, frame grabbers, and accessories for Quackspress. So we consider that Quackspress is the best standard because it was uh, designed specifically to met the high-speed vision uh, requirements. So it means that uh, stream packets are very simple and were designed specifically to be handled by frame grabber with no uh, CPU load. It has a, a natural lane aggregation. So uh, the bandwidth, it's scalable. It's just a, a matter of include more connections and you, you scale up the, the bandwidth. For example, today we can find in the market cameras with uh, uh, eight or, or 16 connections that were used to scale up the bandwidth. It has no jitter no in low latency triggering that it provides us precise control and high reactivity for the system. Um, it provides a reliable communication. Um, so all data is covered by CRC and, um, and parts of the packet uh, are, are redundant uh, to avoid any communication error. And, um, and also on fiber, we have additional uh, forward error correction to correct errors directly during the decoding phase of, of the transmission. Um, it also offers, uh, data transfer stability because on frame grabbers we can have um, frame buffers and uh, this can uh, compensate any fluctuation on the PCI Express uh, uh, performance. It's an international standard so uh, users have uh, guaranteed that uh, they can find multi vendor components, and all these components will inter interoperate uh, correctly. Uh, so it means that if you change a frame grabber by another uh, vendor or, or a camera or, or the cable, uh, everything uh, will work correctly. And again, it's designed for high speed vision. So the whole acquisition chain from camera to, to, to the driver, we have the, the full control of the whole acquisition chain. Quackspress also, um, because of the high performance of, of the cameras using Quackspress, uh, Quackspress natively supports data sharing, which allows the camera to distribute images to different PCs to increase uh, the processing power of the system. And this is, native supported by Quackspress. In the case of the Quackslink QSFP28, we use fiber optics that are better than copper cables in many, many ways. Um, uh, for example, they have higher and uh, unlimited bandwidth. Uh, this is what allow us to, to go to 25G today per lane because copper are limited to 12.5G to for the moment. Uh, support virtually unlimited distance. So hundreds of meters are quite simple to, to achieve with fiber optics. They are completely immune to electromagnetic interference. They are less bulky. Uh, lighter than quax cables. So in this picture, you can see a comparison in terms of the volume of 50, four cables of uh, with 50 meters of uh, quax cables uh, beside a 50 meter of a multi-fiber cable. So we can see that there's a big difference in terms of volume between these two technologies. The drawback, 
uh, of fiber is that we cannot power the camera via fiber, which we could do with, uh, with coax cables. So now we will present some of the board features. So first, the new uh, coax link QSFP plus, as many of our uh, frame grabbers from the coax link family are equipped with uh, digital input and output lines um, that are compatible with a wide range of sensors and motion encoders. They can be accessible by these um, two header connectors on board. Uh, there is also an uh, external connector to make easy the accessibility to, to these uh, IO lines. Uh, if we need more IOs than the ones available on board, we have an additional IO extension where we can add add-on boards to extend the number of IOs. And finally, we also have um, a C2C link that it's a special IO interface to synchronize uh, cameras in different frame grabbers. I will talk more in a few seconds. Um, the uh, so we have an extensive camera and illumination, illumination control functions available on these, these boards uh, for area scan and line scan applications. So these um, illumination uh, control functions allow us to support a very complex uh, schemes of illumination in, in various uh, kinds of applications. So now uh, more about the C2C link. So as I said before, the C2C link, it's used to synchronize multiple boards in, in, in a system. Uh, in this example, we have one PC with two boards. Uh, the first uh, board, it's interfacing with uh, three cameras. So the, the all, whole three cameras are already synchronized internally on the single board. And then if we need to synchronize uh, the two boards, we have just to add the C2C link car, uh, cable and we can uh, synchronize the four cameras uh, with a single trigger. And if we have a second PC with another four cameras, we can also synchronize by using an inter-PC C2C link adapter that uh, will uh, distribute the, the triggering uh, to the, the whole system. So in this system, we have eight cameras that are fully synchronized and only one trigger input that will trigger the, the whole uh, eight cameras. Um, C2C link allow us to synchronize up to eight cards in one PC or up to 32 PCs uh, by using the inter-PC C2C link adapter. We also provide uh, onboard processing. The idea is to offload this uh, processing system, the, the PC, uh, with some, some of the, the uh, processing tasks to let the PC work with, uh, with the inspection application. And uh, so the part of the, the, the tasks are um, uh, processed directly inside of the frame grabber. So here there is a list of uh, some of the modules that we have inside of the frame grabber today. Now in terms of software, um, so first we, we, we have the eGrabber driver that has a modern and user-friendly object-based object API. This driver is fully com compatible um, 
with uh, GenICam. It's supported by Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. Can be programmed with uh, C++, C Sharp, or Python. Uh, it's supported by third-party softwares like LabVIEW, MATLAB, a designer from Cognex, uh, Halcon from MVTech, and uh, so on. Uh, it also can transfer images directly to the GPU memory via uh, DMA. Then we have the eGrabber Studio, that it's an uh, image acquisition tool. The eGrabber Recorder, that it's a high performance video recording uh, library. And finally, we have uh, Memento that is a non-intrusive logging tool for debugging and profiling the system. Uh, in terms of applications, uh, so the um, QSFP28 is designed and target uh, machine vision manufacturers uh, for the electronic and semiconductor industry. Um, also for printing and packaging, food inspection, glass inspection, and also for applications in the medical industry and, and life sciences. Uh, Besides regular machine vision applications, uh, there are some applications that were simply not possible without fiber. For example, long distance applications where the host must be placed far from the camera. Um, also, as I said before, um, fiber is much lighter than copper and can drastically reduce cable congestion. And in terms of high EMI environments, uh, fiber is simply immune to that. To summarize, um, QuaxLink QSFP28 uh, is the next step in bandwidth for high speed machine vision. Um, it's QuaxPress compliant has a, a feature rich set of IOs uh, plus the C2C link for precise synchronization of triggering and cameras. Has a modern and used to use driver and offers also onboard processing. So um, our plan is to uh, start the um, evaluations with customers by the end of the year uh, with this new new board and that's it thank you for your attention if you need more information about products uh, please visit theresist.com thank you thanks a lot paolo and now it's time for the questions i will close so, uh, first question was, for the high-speed camera, is there any extra requirement for the lens? Um, I, I don't think so. It's, it's, um, it's uh, specific for, for, for the camera. Uh, I, I don't think so. <laughs> it's it's, uh, it's uh, specifically uh, for, for depending on the, on the application and uh, it, there is no no special requirement for for lenses i think and the new coax link usf p28 be used by any coax express camera or uh it's so uh, it uses the the coax press over fiber interface so for the moment uh the camera has to have a quax press over fiber uh, interface as well. Um, there is uh, another product that I, I didn't include in this presentation. It's the quax press to quax press over fiber uh, converter that can uh, be used to extend the, the uh, cable 
length uh, on copper uh, the, from, from, from a copper based camera that can be used as well to, to connect uh, Quaxpress copper cameras into this, um, this board. Looking at the time, I think it's time for one last question. Paolo will be there for the final Q&A after each presentation, of course. But uh, the question is, why 28? Ah. <laughs> this is, yeah, so the, the 28 comes from, from the fiber channel world uh, that also use uh, QSFP uh, modules. And um, in fiber channel, so QSFP modules um, compatible with fiber channel, uh, they deliver uh, 2.8 gigabytes per second per lane in a QSFP module. So the 28 came from, from a fiber channel world uh, for, for Ethernet com uh, compatible uh, um, uh, modules, we, we, the maximum bandwidth for each lane is 25 gigabits per second. Uh, that gives a total of 12.5 uh, gigabytes per second. That's so, all. Pa Paolo, thanks. There's a question. Is Quartz Express or Fiber compatible with Gigi? With Gigi? No, 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 it's not compatible with Gigi. Um, so we do share the same physical layer. So we can use uh, the same connectors and cables. But uh, Quaxpress uh, uses only the, the, so the, the physical layer. It's where we can really guarantee the maximum performance of, of the, the uh, transmission medium. Uh, I mean, you you have you can guarantee that you will have a low latency for triggering, uh, extremely low jitter for really have a very um, precise uh, camera control. So we just use the, the first the, the lowest layer of Ethernet. And, and uh, GigiVision has, of course, all the, the layers and can be integrated in the in a whole Ethernet network. But these other layers, it's 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 hard to, to guarantee really a nanosecond uh, level of jitter or or or, or latency. Mm -hmm. But maybe you have some more. Yeah, so the, the idea, our plan is to, to demonstrate the, the Quaxlink QSFP28, as well the um, Quaxpress to uh, QSFP plus uh, converter on, on this show. Uh, we want also to uh, bring our uh, updates on, on our um, video processing uh, libraries for 2D and AI. So there are many new things that uh, will appear uh, in Stuttgart. So we are also curious. So I would like to say thanks a lot to the speakers. A lot of new products, a lot of new technologies we, see to, we saw today.